Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to uh, do a brief uh, overview uh, regarding uh, brachial plexus injuries uh, in adults. The objective of this talk is to review the mechanism of brachial plexus injuries, classification of brachial plexus injuries, clinical assessment, updated diagnostic studies, and treatment strategies for, uh, plexus, uh, for brachial plexus injuries in uh, adults. The incidence of brachial plexus injury uh, in adult, which is a severe peripheral nerve injury affecting the upper extremity, causing functional damage and physical disability to the upper extremity. The most common cause of adult brachial plexus injury is traffic accident, especially motorcycle accident. In recent literature, the prevalence rate of uh, brachial plexus injury in molytrauma patients is about 1.2%. There is uh, an incident of up to 25% of accompanying arterial injury with brachial plexus injury. We all know the formation of the brachial plexus. Uh, the brachial plexus is formed by the ventral demi of uh, the C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1 spinal nerves. The ventral demi forms the root of the plexus. Then the roots of the C5, C6 combine together to form the superior trunk. The root of C7 form the middle trunk. The root of C8 and T1 form the inferior trunk. Each trunk gives an anterior division and posterior division. All posterior divisions from the, the three trunks form the uh, posterior cord, the anterior division of the superior and middle trunk for the lateral cord, and the anterior division of the inferior trunk for the medial cord. Each cord gives terminal branch. The lateral cord gives uh, musculocutaneous nerve and gives contribution to the median nerve. The posterior gives the axillary and the radial nerve, and the medial uh, cord gives the ulnar nerve and another contribution to the median nerve. So uh, they are composed of uh, five components, five roots, three trunks, six division, three cords, and five terminal branches. Uh, so the patho regarding the pathophysiology of brachial plexus injury, root injuries is defined as root avulsions from the spinal cord. As we see, the roots are, there is ventral root and dorsal root, which have the, uh, the dorsal root ganglion. Any injury in the root uh, before the dorsal root ganglion is called root avulsion and called preganglionic lesion. Postganglionic lesions are lesions after the uh, dorsal root ganglion, which include either uh, lesions in the spinal cord, it's, it's spinal nerve itself, in the trunk, in the divisions. This is called supraclavicular postganglionic. Postganglionic infraclavicular lesions include lesions in the cords and in the terminal branches. The causes of adult brachial plexus injury, either open injuries, including step wounds and gut shock injuries, and atrogenic injuries. Atrogenic injuries occur usually during interscalene block. Uh, closed injuries is due to either traction or compression. Compression usually accompany fracture of the clavicle, fracture of the head of the neck or, and the neck of the humerus. Traction injuries usually result in either avulsion of the cord, uh, avulsion of the roots from the spinal cord, or traction injury, or stretch injuries, or even rupture of the uh, nerve. The position of the arm during the traction injury determines the nerve injury level. If the shoulder neck angle is widened, upper trunk is usually injured while if the uroscapular angle is widened, lower trunk is injured. You can see here the uh, neck shoulder angle is widened, so the upper trunk is usually cut. This is like fall on the top of the shoulder while hanging, uh, like hanging uh, with a tree branch or something. So the uh, humeral scapular angle is widened, and so uh, usually this result in injury of the lower trunk. Traction injuries also can occur due to improper arm position under general anesthesia, as an excessive neck tilt, especially in each chair position used in shoulder scope, or excessive traction in lateral decubitus position used only also in uh, shoulder arthroscopy, uh, arthroscopic surgeries. Usually, this traction shouldn't exceed uh, 10 pounds. 
uh, and also in spine surgeries due to hyperabduction of the art for a long time under general anesthesia. Combined traction and compression injuries can occur in motor vehicle accidents with fracture of the cervical transverse process, clavicular fracture, scapular fracture, and proximal femoral fractures, and in some uh, sport injuries like in American football and in gymnastics. The aim of classification of brachial plexus injury is to detect the site of injury uh, and to detect the severity of the injury. So uh, they classify it into four groups, the ganglionic foot injury, postganglionic spinal nerve, brachial avicular and retroclavicular trunk and divisions, or inferior avicular into the cords and terminal branches. Regarding the severity of injury, sedons classify nerve injuries into three categories, neuropraxia, which is local conduction block with segmental demyelination, no axonal abnormality, usually recovery is full. Axonotemesis, which is axonal injury, but the endoneurium and perineural sheaths are intact. And neurotemesis, which is complete transection of the nerve and surgical repair is mandated in uh, this type. Sunderland further classify them into five groups. The first group is the same as neuropraxia, as the sedons group. The second group include axonotemesis. Third group, include axonal damage with disruption of the endoneurium, but the perineurium is intact. Fourth group, like third group, but even the, the perineurium uh, is damaged. Uh, and the fifth group is neurotemesis. A sixth group is added by uh, Macnon, which is a mixed injury caused by gunshot injury. Diagnosis of brachial plexus injury as any diagnosis we clinical evaluation, radiological evaluation, and neurophysiologic studies. The clinical evaluation, there is some signs suggestive of preganglionic injury. These signs are include severe causalgia in an anesthetized limb. So there is loss of sensation, but there is severe pain it's called root shotting vein. This suggests preganglionic nature of injury. Loss of levator scapula and serratus anterior function, Horner syndrome, no tenal sign on percussion of the neck and paralysis of the hemidiaphragm. All these signs suggest the uh, ganglionic injury. Clinical evaluation should follow the normal routine, including adequate history, mechanism of injury, and adequate examination, especially neurological examination of the upper limb. The brachial plexus index charts should be completed, including detailed motor sensory examination of each muscle as we see here in the chart and each dermatome of the upper limb, front and back. And we know the grading of muscle power according to the power scale include six uh, scores from zero to five. Zero, no contraction, one flicker of traces of contraction, two, active movement with gravity eliminated, three, active movement against the gravity, four, against the gravity and some resistance, but weakness five normal power. So each group, each muscle in this chart should be graded from zero to five. Also, uh, the dermatomal map of the arm for sensory roads, we know uh, C5 usually on the top of the shoulder, C6, the thumb and lateral part of the forearm, C7, the middle finger, C8, one and a half fingers, and medial part of the forearm, T1, near the axilla. This is the uh, anterior view and posterior view. All should be documented in this chart. Radiologic, radiological examination of the cervical spine involved shoulder, extremity, chest should be performed to assess associated fractures. Usually there is associated fractures in transverse process of cervical spine or, or the clavicle or the first strip. So this should be evaluated radiologically through x-rays and CT. If physical examination demonstrate abnormal radial or ulnar pulse, as we, as we, uh, as we said, there is 25% uh, instance of vascular injury. So one suspected arteriography or CT angiography is indicated. CT myelography, is the current gold standard in diagnostic method 
of avulsion injuries. The presence of pseudomene GCL at three or four weeks after injury is highly suggestive of root avulsion. As we can see here, there is pseudomene GCL in axial views and in uh, coronal and surgical views. Magnetic resonant myography, these are uh, developed sequence in the MRI that shows the detailed parts of the plexus can localize the nerve lesion. You can see the brachial plexus is very clear in this magnetic resonance neurography. Electro electrodiagnostic studies that include EMG, this helped to confirm the diagnosis of nerve injury, localize the level of the lesion, estimate the severity of the lesion, and is it complete or partial lesion, and they had helped to distinguish preganglionic from postganglionic lesion. Sensory nerve action potentials are specifically important to localize lesions and differentiate also pre or postganglionic. Timing of these studies should be within four to six weeks after the injury to look for spontaneous recovery. Serial electrophysiological uh, studies with repeated physical examination is necessary to identify uh, the progression of recovery, uh, spontaneous recovery of uh, brachial plexus injury. The management of brachial plexus injury, conservative management, uh, include adequate pain relief, include arm sling, cock-up splints to prevent deformities and physiotherapy. Passive range of motion is very important, should be used daily basis to maintain joint mobility and prevent contraction and deformities. Uh, electric stimulation of the muscle and therapeutic massage or regime. Surgical management, indication and timing differs according to the cause of brachial plexus injury. If the cause is sharp open injuries like stab wounds or Immediate exploration and primary care is required. Associated vascular injury is another indication of immediate exploration and repair of brachial plexus injuries. Implant open injuries delayed exploration by two to three weeks after injury is preferable because the nerve injury will have been demarcated by this time and nerve repair outside the zone of injury is uh, easy. The best operative timing for closed traction injuries is from three to six months after injury to give time for spontaneous recovery. More than six months, more than one year, there is a bad result with even with repair because there is a problem in the motor end plate. If there is a complete C5 to T1 avulsion injury, early exploration in one to two weeks is recommended. And when root avulsion is highly suspicious, early exploration and reconnection within three to six weeks is indicated. So what about the surgical options uh, in brachial plexus injury? Either direct nerve repair, neurophy, uh, neurophy either side to side or side uh, end to end or end to side. Nerve repair with nerve graft, if there is contused part of the nerve, so we should bridge by a nerve graft and you know the nerve graft the most commonly used nerve is the sural nerve. This is uh, sural nerve graft, three cable sural nerve grafts. Nerve transfer, the uh, most famous is the spinal accessory nerve. It's used to transfer to suprascapular nerve to regain shoulder abduction or to musculocutaneous nerve to regain uh, elbow flexion. Functional free muscle transplantation is another option the most uh, commonly used is the gracilis, uh, gracilis function free uh, muscle graft uh, transferred to restore elbow flexion. The gracilis is fixed to uh, the clavicle proximally and distally it's fixed to the tendon of the biceps. The nerve supply is uh, gained from spinal accessory or one of the intercostal uh, nerves, usually three, the third or fourth intercostal. The priorities for re innervation in total plexus injury is given to regaining first shoulder movement, especially flexion, and then elbow flexion, and last for restoration of the finger flexion. Management of residual deformities include soft tissue releases of joint contractures, tendon transfers for residual peripheral nerve injuries, and arthrodesis. Uh, this is a salvage procedure. This is arthrodesis of the shoulder. If uh, the shoulder and flail uh, upper limb with unstable shoulder. 
but you should have a functioning scapular muscle, trapezius and scapular muscle to compensate for uh, the shoulder movement. So in summary, Pecker plexus injury in adults occur as a result of open gunshot injury, stop on the injury or closed injuries. Closed injuries, usually motorcycle accident and sport injuries. It results in either traction or compression or combination. Diagnosis require meticulous history, neurologic examination using Pecker plexus charts to assess the site and severity of injury. Imaging study, especially magnetic resonance, neurography, and electrophysiological studies can localize the site of injury and detect recovery. Management is either conservative or operative. Timing of surgery is dependent on the nature of injury. Surgical options include nerve repair, graft nerve transfer, and free muscle transplantation. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Mohammed Salah Shara. Uh, الأول أنا بشكر حضرتك على المحاضرة الجميلة دي يا دكتور محمد. الحاجة الثانية أنا بشكر حضرتك على إن حضرتك حضرتها in a very tight time. <تصفيق> يعني دكتور محمد بصراحة مشكورا يعني حضر المحاضرة in just 12 hours. أنا أنا بشكر حضرتك إن إحنا كان عندنا المحاضرة دي إحنا هننتهز الفرصة كان عندنا المحاضرة دي هيلقيها بروفيسور بشار العلولي من جامعة ماكماستر في كندا. سي أسرته للأسف أصيبت كورونا وإمبارح فهو اعتذر يعني فننتهز الفرصة إن إحنا يعني نسأل الله الكريم رب العرش العظيم اللهم أمين يا رب العالمين إنه يشفيهم ويعافيهم شفاء لا يغدر سقما يا رب العالمين اللهم أمين ربنا يشفيهم يا رب ويعافيهم فإن شاء الله دكتور بشار يكون معنا برضو في محاضرات تانية فدكتور محمد مشكورا تطوع بتجهيز المحاضرة in just 12 hours موضوع, موضوع صعب وديفيكالت و- 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 وسخيف بصراحة فما شاء الله يعني تسلم حبيبي ربنا يكرمك شكرا دكتور محمد بي دكتور أحمد شيخ احنا معنا أنا شايف lots of questions يعني شوف حبيبي كده لو في أي questions تمام um, I got one question about the availability of magnetic resonant neurography uh, in, in practice um, يعني هو يعني طبعا السيرجز for the brachial plexus are done usually in specific Uh, orthoplastic centers تبقى فيها orthopedic surgeons وفيها neurosurgeons وفيها plastic surgeons فهي available في ال في ال الهوسبيتال اللي انا شغال فيها هنا في السعودية يعني it's present يعني because يعني it's a specific sequence of the MRI that show the nerves يعني فهي موجودة يعني انا معرفش بصراحة ال availability في مصر ما شفتهاش في مصر Okay. Um, uh, to one question about the when to explore uh, the nerve injury in brachial plexus injury. Time okay. for surgical uh, exploration. Uh, no, no timing يعني in details. So, uh, timing dependent on injury. Like open injury or injury here vascular injury, you, you should uh, do immediate exploration. Like uh, close the injury, most probably traction injury, you should wait for spontaneous recovery. From three to six months. If there is no spontaneous recovery, you can explore. There are some exceptions. يعني لو في total injury, some surgeons prepare نوع ما يعملوا earlier exploration. Okay. Uh, another question about what? What about neurotization? Neurotization uh, the same as uh, nerve transfer. يعني في uh, a long list of available nerves. But the spinal accessory is. Uh, The most uh, most common uh, used nerve in uh, brachial plexus injuries. Um, I think well, one the question, last question, it's about case scenario. I just I would ask uh, uh, Prof. Muhammad to have a look at it in the questions because it's a bit long uh, to be answered. Um, okay. Thanks, Prof. Uh, terrible try, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Thank you for this um, uh, good and heavy talk, really. Uh, but uh, we, we need to, to be at least aware of it. So uh, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Muhammad Salah.